Hello there. Uh, my name is David Duckworth. I am the CEO and founder of Rowan Energy. Um, before I start, actually, can I ask, has anyone ever heard of us before? It's always absolutely surprises me. There are people, look, there is, actually. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do um, and what we're currently doing at the moment. And I'm going to run a little bit about our business model and um, give you an idea what makes us different from other businesses and projects maybe within our space and maybe we're a little bit different from every other project that's here. So Rowan Energy is building a, a network of interconnected renewable energy assets. Um, the network is underpinned by our custom built, low powered, therefore very low carbon blockchain. Um, so the Rowan Energy blockchain runs on a new kind of consensus mechanism called proof of generation. On top of that, we run a new protocol called the Sustainable Mining Protocol. Um, currently, we're only connected to solar, um, but with the new protocol, we're able to expand that to other renewable energy sources. And I'll go back into that in a, just a little while. It's pretty quick, um, 219 transactions a second. And the whole network runs on these little devices called smart miners. Now, a smart miner is a combination between a smart meter and a blockchain validation server in one. Essentially what it does is we install it in people's homes and it counts the energy being produced by the roof. Um, it validates transactions on our network and it mints NFT carbon offset certificates in real time. Now, I'll explain to you in just a moment why that's really important. We've got a coin, of course we have everybody. Um, um, but I kind of want to emphasize in this talk about how, like, I think everybody in this room is going to say, hooray, you know, blockchain is amazing. And it is a really, really good bit of a technology. Um, but it's not the only thing we do. We don't consider ourselves a crypto company. We don't consider ourselves a, a blockchain company. We've got SQL databases. We're not an SQL database company. Um, but um, it is a fundamental part of our infrastructure. Now, I think when people talk about blockchain, and I, I, I've seen this throughout the years of being in the industry, um, blockchain is often seen as like a hammer looking for a nail. People are desperately trying to find things to hit blockchain with to make them, um, uh, to give themselves a, a really good use case. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how we're integrating this into normal people's lives. And when I say normal people's lives, I'm talking about non-coiners, muggles, maybe you could call them, I don't know. Um, but these are, these are people of whom um, wouldn't normally have anything to do with blockchain or crypto. So um, currently, we have about 1,100 nodes out in, 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 in the field. Um, our demographic are mostly over 60. And these guys have a blockchain validation server in their home. Um, we monitor, that says 8 megawatts. It's actually between 8 and 9 megawatts of solar at the moment. Um, and we're set to expand that over the next three years to about 120,000 houses. We've already done the deal to do that. Now, I think um, the other thing I touched on, obviously, was that we, um, we mint carbon offsets, and that's in real time. Now, what I wanted to emphasize here is where I'm saying that blockchain isn't the main part of our business. Actually, what's more important is the quality of data we put into our blockchain. So now, if you fill your blockchain with rubbish, all you're going to have is a blockchain full of rubbish, uh, rubbish that you can't bloody delete either, right? So um, we spend a, quite a lot of our time developing processes and, and operational procedures of which emphasize and assure the quality of the data that goes in. Now, in the world of carbon offsetting, you need to make sure that you are traceable and immutable, um, and the quality of the data is absolutely spot on. Now, the smart miner itself, right? So unlike some other products you might see on the market, you can't just buy this off the shelf and install it yourself. Following industry um, regulations and, and, and standards, you have to have a certified engineer install our device. And we, we, we hold classrooms with engineers being trained. You can find those pictures on social media. Um, and, th and that means we can assure that every single smart miner is in installed where they say it is. Um, and also it's... Um, installed in exactly the same way. Now, previously, you weren't able to track the uh, gen energy generated by renewable energy because they only had a meter on the edge. But you could be running anything behind that. You could be firing up a diesel-powered generator, 
and then sending that in the grid and claiming it is green energy. But with Rowan Energy, because of the processes that we have in place, every engineer that goes there is trained. He has an app. That app, it's, um, it takes a GPS snapshot where he is. And also, he, um, and it, it, there, there are photographs taken of the infrastructure, which means with our carbon offsets, you're able to drill all the way into the um, asset that actually produced it. The Rowan, the Rowan Smart Mine is mid-certified which is to uh, smart meter standards, which means we can build from it if we, we took that data. Um, and that is something that's absolutely necessary within the, uh, within the industry as well. Other companies that are maybe taking their data for inverters, we can tell you that inverter data is 15% out. We, we know this because we track the energy coming out of that inverter, and the inverter has a 7% a, a loss when it transfers between DC and AC. And if you ask an inverter company to mid-certify their hardware, not one of them will do it. Believe me, I've tried. Um, so the other thing I think to talk about quality of data um, is carbon offsetting has got a pretty bad reputation. Um, and Rhone Energy is now working with some pretty interesting people within the, uh, within, uh, the carbon community, within leads in sustainability in big organizations. And that is to develop the version two of the carbon offset certificate. A carbon offset certificate that has trust built in, it's immutable. But because our smart miner produces certificates in real time, there's no air gap in the data, which means it can't be tampered with. And we know that we're filling our data with good stuff and not with rubbish, right? Um, here are some of the people, I won't run through them, I'm sure when you rewatch it back, some of these guys. But they come from all walks of life, from um, their academics as well as from big um, industries, we've got some people that are kind of like climate activists, we've got people from think tanks in there, carbon experts, and we're getting them around a table in order for a two-day workshop, and they're going to become an institute that we're forming, um, but when they come out of that two-day workshop, we're expecting to have a framework for a new kind of carbon offset. Now, because we uh, run our platform um, using a blockchain, we can add some regulatory requirements to the smart contract. Um, it can be transferred only once, once it's offset. It's got a, a, a life span of 12 months before it self burns. And that's to avoid things like double counting. So if I took the certificate and offset my carbon, I can't pass it to you and you offset your carbon, and then you pass it to your mate over there and they, and they offset their carbon. Um, it means that without, beyond reasonable doubt, these are really, really high quality and, and, and absolute premium carbon offsets. We also found as well, when we surveyed people in the UK, that when you're offsetting, usually in the UK, you're funding a, a project on the other side of the world. And for UK people, we've, we found, they are, it's so far removed from their everyday life, they question whether what they're paying for um, is actually doing any good. And so the UK government are making noises now that they want everybody, um, uh, every carbon offset to be used in the UK to be homegrown. And this means that we can, um, or we're going to already have that facility in place when this comes to law. And the best thing about Rowan Energy is we can cookie cut that operation and we can move it from country to country to country. At the moment, we're proving the business model in the UK, but this, this will work pretty much anywhere that has an open policy for blockchain, for carbon offsetting, and, and obviously cryptocurrency. Our customers, so this is a good question, right? So why would people put the, um, the smart miner into people's homes? Well, we pay our customers an extra 10 pence a kilowatt. This is on top of any subsidies, on top of any feeding, and it doesn't matter if they feed it into the grid or they use it. In fact, we actively encourage our customers to use their energy. That extra 10 pence a kilowatt accumulates for a five kilowatt package up to about 450 pounds a year. So that lowers their buyback period, which in turn encourages the adoption of rooftop solar. What's a buyback period? So, a buyback period is how solar has been sold traditionally throughout the world where you pay $5,000 or 5,000 pounds and solar takes you this, this long to make its money back for you and then its profit and that's six years, seven years. Well, at the moment with, it, with batteries and expenses, you're looking at 15 years. When you add our product, it brings it down to less than nine, which is a much more psychological reason. Our wholesale distributor, um, has seen an, uh, an increase in sales of 30% because of selling our product in, in an industry that's 65% down this year compared to last year. 
The route to market allows us, because we've created our own certificates and we're able to transfer them and store them and move them really, really easy across our chain, lots of different routes to market. We're working with exchanges in order to decarbonize um, the exchanges. These exchanges that we're working with, they're under pressure as well, like any business, to decarbonize. And when you've got Bitcoin going at 10 kilowatts of hour per transaction, it's a really, really difficult one to go. Um, I think probably before I talk about our scaling, I'll talk about um, our distribution network. So our distribution network are solar installers. It, it was a much, much better way for us to scale rapidly. They have access to uh, new customers and their existing customers as well. Um, but the solar installer gets a product of which makes them very competitive in a very competitive market. It gives them a unique selling point. We're in a really good position, right? So we've got uh, nine distributors selling this now. We've got a waiting list of another 120. But we get phone calls every day from solar installers wanting to sell our product because they're losing sales because they can't sell it. Um, so I told you we've done our deal for um, 100,000 social houses in the UK. The social impact for these guys, where they're going to be receiving their energy as part of this deal, for 20% below the market value. With this partner as well, they're also going to be getting a free internet connection. Which, So in, in one breath, they're saving energy poverty and they're also connectivity poverty. Which doesn't sound like a thing, but actually it's becoming a human right to get connected. We have um, every customer produces approximately six or 7,000 certificates for us every year. Um, and each of those certificates are worth approximately about 20 cents. Every certificate sold feeds our tokenomics model. Every smart miner that comes online, this is a smart miner, by the way, in case anyone's wondering why I'm holding it. Um, so <laughs> every one that comes online um, and every certificate sold, and all the transaction fee feeds our tokenomics model. Our tokenomics model is a deflationary model. Um, it decreases the circulating supply and adds, adds buy pressure to the market. And I won't speculate, but I think everybody knows what that kind of goes to. Okay, so I've got like about two minutes left, and I just wanted to give you an end-to-end -end how it goes. So a customer buys solar, and they go to a distributor who's got a unique selling point, and he's able to offer them a system with a far lower payback period and far higher returns than any of his competitors. And they come and put the device in, um, if the, um, in, in the solar industry, you get a, it's seasonal, they call it the solar coaster, actually, right? So sometimes they're selling loads and sometimes they're selling none. In the points of when they're not selling many, they can go and retrofit our product and have another product to go back to their existing base. And so all of this stimulates the market. Um, and, um, and because our certificates are worth so much money, Right? And these are the certificates that come out and they were able to go to big industry now and they are able to see the actual change. And because you can see how much solar has been added to our network because of our device, we're able to quantify that to that country's actual net zero targets. And that is now getting the attention of policymakers. So finally, you can get your phones out and you can scan this QR code. Um, what we're doing is we're offering to offset everybody who here on this, their carbon footprint from coming to Token 2049. Um, after this, you'll be sent an email and we'll take some details about how far you traveled and how you did it. Um, and then um, when, when, we're, when they're available for you, we'll offset your carbon. Now, um, I've got about 30 seconds left. I think it's probably worth understanding that we have a team of 25 members of staff now and every single one of them are superstars. And it's I can't reiterate enough that the blockchain and the technology is the baseline for everything we do, but it's the quality of data, which all of them are working on, working out the quality of data they put into that blockchain. Because remember, as I said at the beginning, if you, if you put rubbish onto your blockchain, all you're gonna end up with is a blockchain full of rubbish. Thank you.